All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Phoenix Wright Trials and Tribulations. We are going to pick up right where we left off, just a quick advance. I've been sick this last week. Today's the first day in over a week. I feel up to doing this. I hope things will go all right, but every once in a while, if I need to take a quick break to go blow my nose or something, please be it understanding. Uh, you know, I am still suffering from some leftover symptoms of the annoying cold. Fair enough. All right, so we need to break this, right? See? He won't do it. I basically have to break it. And I have, I now have the Wagaratama or whatever the hell it's called. Uh, the, the Bahama Mama or whatever it is you need to break that, I believe, right? Let's see. The Magatama. That's right. The Bahama Mama. Here it is. Here we go. Maggie's motive. Look at his face. What's happening? I do not like this horrible feeling. I have to know the truth. What happened that day? I lost, I lost. I will confess everything. Just don't hurt me. Huh? Well, that was a new world record. It was a lottery ticket. A lottery ticket? The man who died here had a lottery ticket for half a million dollars. Half a million? We, oui, but after the incident, this ticket. It disappeared. The ticket disappeared? This was the motive that the prosecution gave for Maggie. They said that she's a poison the man who gets a half a million dollar lottery ticket. Why didn't you tell me about this sooner? My hello! You've been trying to hide this information about the lottery ticket from me. And I want to know the reason why. No, mon cher. You doubt me, but I've confessed to you everything I know. Mr. Armstrong, the half a million dollar lottery ticket, I think I know who took it. I think the winning ticket was stolen by this person. Him. Mr. Armstrong, I believe this is very high probability that it was you. Ah! Uh, wow, that is one piercing scream, even for a man like him. By the way, shout out to Abigail Rayfinger, who has resubscribed for four months in a row. Thank you very much. Okay. Mais pourquoi moi? Why, you have no evidence? I am not Mess the Mask. I am not the kind of person who steals the property of others. Sorry to disappoint you, Mr. Armstrong, but I have evidence to the contrary. I present you to you proof that you have stolen from others in the past. Here we go. Convicted before a wicked man or woman repeat offender. What is this? A poem? Oh, monsieur, you, you know me well. I adore poems. Please read it and put some feeling into it. Convicted before a, a wicked man or woman repeat offender. I'm sorry I have to bring it up, Mr. Armstrong. But you have been arrested for stealing from your customers before, haven't you? Mon dieu, le mis misonage, you are the liar. <laughs> you deny it? Do not make the false accusations, s'il vous plaît. So, do you have any proof? I want to see the like, incontestable proof I have ever stolen from one of my customers. Oh, man. Oh, wait. We know. The Magatama. He stole it and put it in the kitchen. Yup. It seems old habits die hard, Mr. Armstrong. Uh, what is that? This is my Magatama. And I found it in your kitchen. No! no. <laughs> wow, that scream just about broke some windows. Oui, oui. Uh, I have a weakness for the little trinkets and the figurines. My, it just slips out. I cannot stop it. You've stolen handkerchiefs, gloves, and other things from your customers, right? Oui, it is the truth. 
I'm just a timid little girl inside, Monsieur. A timid little girl. Besides, this time it was not less small print yet, we. Oui. It was 500,000 dollars. My non, why would I steal it? I have no need for such money. Really now? Oh, Monsieur, what is it? Isn't it true that you're in some pretty serious trouble? And that you're in desperate need of a large amount of cash? Right here. His stretch down is deep in the red, isn't he? Uh. You have a loan. To the tune of half a million dollars. That lottery ticket would have wiped out your debts. Yeah. Well, Mr. Armstrong, what do you have to say for yourself now? Uh. Love. <laughs> Unlock successful. Alright, we did it. Well, Samson just tipped me a dollar and says, because we were talking previously to the stream starting tonight, because tomorrow I'm playing a new game called Team Sonic Racing, but it's not available, like, anywhere digitally. And Samson just tipped me a dollar and said, Team Sonic Racing isn't available to preload anywhere. In their latest earning report, Sega blamed digital games for their profits decline. And a recent survey asked what it would take for fans to buy physical instead. Well, guess what? If that game isn't available digital tomorrow, I'm not playing it at all. So, instead of them actually having the intended, uh... The intended result of this is actually their active choice. Um, they're just not going to get my money at all. And I'm not playing it, so. <laughs> anyway, thank you for the dollar tip, Samson. And, oh, my God. Oh, my God. Excuse me. Ben Boxer just hit me, or uh, just did a 50-bit cheer. It says, this cat use a Huawei phone. Google blocked it. No more Gmail, Android updates, or Play Store. No, isn't that like a, a knockoff Chinese phone? Uh, no, we don't use knockoff Chinese products here in the house, so uh, we would not be affected by that. All right. All right, see you now. Maggie's motive. Mr. Armstrong. You said that the victim had a winning lottery ticket for half a million dollars. How did you know he had something like that in his first place? The man, it was listening to that video with his earpiece. Hmm, Maggie said something about that too. The winning number was announced on the news, I think. All of a sudden, it exploded. Yes, half a million, he shouted. And a ticket? Oh, yeah, he had all of his tickets spread out on the table. I, I was so desperately in need of money, so I uh, put the poison in his coffee. Oh, uh, no, 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 no. Oh, no, no, naughty man. I simply helped myself to one of his tickets. What? The uh. victim collapsed and Maggie passed out. I thought to myself, uh, poor Quapa, he had so many of them. Yeah, but only one of them was the winning ticket, right? How could you do that, Mr. Armstrong? Maggie was invested because of you. No, this is not true. <laughs> okay. I did not take it. Let the get for half a million, I mean. But you just told us you did. You said you took a ticket. Uh, my non, my feel. It was not. That's enough. Huh? Ah! What the? Mr. Godot? What in the heck are you doing here? Urgh. This is without a doubt. The worst coffee I have ever tasted, Mr. Armstrong. <clears throat> you came in here for coffee? Does craving for coffee know no bounds? Perhaps Mr. Armstrong stole one of the victim's tickets on the day in question. I am the head known, uh, just a pretty little girl who everyone is laughing at. But in that case, Maggie shouldn't be the only one under suspicion. He had the wrong ticket. What? Mr. Armstrong made off with the winning ticket's pretty neighbor. So, the ticket he took was worthless? Not quite. He did win something. A dollar. You see, I I'm just a pretty face without my looks to have a new thing. Uh, so, what happened to the winning ticket then? The one he meant to steal. Indeed, what did happen to it? 
I don't like spoiling myself by watching trailers, so we'll just wait and see how the movie turns out tomorrow, won't we? Ah. Voila, you do time to level a pretty little airhead. Looks like I won't be needing this load anymore. Leaders don't thrown into the trash. Damn. Fallen 1570 has resell for 20 months and says, Phoenix Wright is one of my favorite narrative games. I'm so glad you're doing them, Phil. Thank you for the resub, Fallen, and the ongoing support. I appreciate that. <clears throat> Looks like we got a new mystery now. Namely, where did the winning ticket go? I got a bad feeling about this. Well, anyway. We can't let Maggie suffer any longer for this, and certainly not again. To be continued. All right. Saves the game. Would you like to save? No. Delete. Please delete the whole file. <clears throat> to the trial. Alright, back to the district court. Oh, I see. I guess I shouldn't have expected this. I should have expected this. Nobody saw the other guy, huh? But he was there when I took the coffee over, sir. Scout's honor. Maggie! Uh-oh. Ack! Uh, Detective Gumshoe! Are you doing all right? How are you feeling? Uh, as if you need to ask either question, sir. Don't let him get you down, Maggie. And don't forget to eat well, okay? Roger. And you! And yes? You better get square this case away. You got it, pal? Maggie's innocent, you hear? If you screw up, then I'll be doing some squaring away myself. Squaring away some paperwork for your arrest. Uh, I think he's serious. Hey, detective, you're on our side for once, right? Yup. So you'll be able to help Maggie out, right? Really? Uh, can you, sir? Uh, of course. Uh, I got the situation under control. I'm going to be the first witness on the stand today. If something I say doesn't mesh with the facts, make sure you point it out, all right? Uh, sh sure. Okay, we're forming a united front today, pal. You get me? I can tell I can't tell you how grateful I am, sir. I've always admired you so much, detective. I know I can count on you. Looks like it should all go pretty smoothly today, huh? I can only wish. Huh. <laughs> Project 8 tipped me a dollar and says, Have you ever considered going into voice acting? It's an easy field to get into, and they're always looking for more people. You can transition while you're ready to move on from streaming. Uh, that's completely false from what I've heard. Now I've actually looked into it. For all to understand, voice acting is an incredibly competitive field. There's more than enough people who want to do it, and that basically it's all about who you know in the industry. So if you have acting or voice acting buddies, chances are you'll probably be, have a higher chance of getting the job than, say, someone who has zero experience and zero friends in the industry, um, of which that's me, basically. So I could be wrong, but that's what I heard. All right. Um, I never looked into it. You're absolutely right. I didn't. I never looked into it pro professionally or nothing, but, you know... The thing is, I mean, could I do voice acting? Yeah, I could, but it would be very taxing on my voice. I know it would, and I've actually heard that a lot of people in the industry complain that they wish that there were unions and everything because a lot of the times they're sitting there for, for eight, ten hours a day just talking constantly with, like, like limited breaks, and their voices get destroyed doing a hundred takes of the same thing to sound differently. And basically, it's for what I'm to understand, it's really, really tough work. Um, not to say... That's not fulfilling work. Imagine playing a video game and hearing your freaking voice in that game forever, right? That's got to be kind of cool. Um, but I don't know if it's something that I would be able to do. The other thing is my voice, like, oh, after t 11 years of talking every day, all day, my voice is okay. But, like, if I strained it a lot, I have problems. Like, you've heard my voice get very hoarse sometimes at, at periods when, you know, I, I basically overstrained it. And it makes me nervous, that if I were to try to do something like that, that maybe I'd have some, you know, throat problems. I could be wrong, though, but I don't know. I've never really looked seriously into it. So thank you, Project A, for the tip. Sue Double G Cheer. And he said, what's up, slime? And then a bunch of stuff. I don't even know what that means. Thank you for the cheer. See, I'm full to be $2. Did you, did you, did you, the awesome men ladder match with 10-star finish? I think he's talking about 
the WWE Money in the Bank pay-per-view from last night that had one of the worst finishes I've ever seen ever in anything in wrestling. Um, inexplicable, insulting to the viewers, insulting to the talent, insulting to pretty much everyone who cares about WWE. And uh, it just proves how to touch Vince is, but that's not what the stream is about tonight. Okay, to the court. Rubble, 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 rubble. Good is now in session for the trial of Maggie B Maggie Bird. Ho, ho, ho. The defense is ready, Your Honor. Ha! My first kill. Ah, Biddy. M Mr. Uh, Mr. Wright. Uh, yes, Your Honor. Ah, uh, what's wrong? Uh, nothing. It's just whenever I addressed you in the previous trial, your response was, "You was talking to me." It was a little well intimidating. Oh, uh, no, no, no. That wasn't me. That was the phony Phoenix. I see. So our trusty Phoenix Wright is back with us now, is he? Our trusty. So, Mr. Godot, your opening statement, please. Ho, 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 ho. Merry Christmas. Mr. Trey, whether you're a fake or the real deal, you will find out soon enough through this trial today. But I can already tell you, I'm the real Phoenix Wright. I wasn't questioning whether you are Phoenix Wright or not. I was questioning... Whether you had studied law or not. <laughs> That's what I intend to find out. There's no denying it. This guy's an asshole. <laughs> and behind this mask is a man who really hates me for one reason or another. Oh my god. As everyone is aware, the court has already given its verdict on this case once. Also, it's the middle of May, Christmas is very far off, and uh, it's a dead time for the elves. So if anyone has any odd jobs around the house that they could do to maybe raise a few bucks, uh, I'd appreciate that. Keep that past me your number after the trial. Anyway, therefore, I won't stand for irrelevant, test, irrelevant testimony during this retrial. Nor will I stand... <sighs> Nor will I stand for a simple repetition of the evidence presented in the last trial. I'm not planning on repeating anything that phony me said, trust me. Now then, Mr. Godot, please summon your first witness. Okay, then. <laughs> Let's start with the formality, shall we? Name and occupation? Witness, state your name for the court. Uh-huh. Oh, uh, sorry, sir. The name's Police Detective, Police Department Detective, Occupation, Dick Gumshoe. <laughs> Other way around, Detective. Huh? Uh, oh, uh, sorry. Anyway, I'm the officer in charge of this case since yesterday, sir. Since yesterday? Yeah, the guy who was on the initial investigation is tied up with another case now. I hope Gumshoe's really got everything under control, for everyone's sake. I see. So, Detective Gumshoe, uh, would you outline for the court the basic facts of the case? Yeah, yeah, yes, sir. The victim's name was Glenn L. He was a professional programmer. He was on the payroll for Blue Screens, Inc., a local company. This is the victim's autopsy report. The court accepts this into evidence. Glenn's autopsy report added to the court record. Um, and here are the floor plans of the restaurant. When the incident took place, the victim was sitting right here. The poisoned coffee was brought over to him by the, um... By the waitress. The waitress being the accused? Yeah. The victim died from poisoning almost immediately after he took a sip of the coffee. At the time of the incident, there were two other people in the restaurant. Mr. Gene Armstrong, the owner and chef. And a regular by the name of Mr. Victor Kudo. God damn it. Hmm. It still seems to be a very straightforward case to me. Train BN floor plans added to the court record. Come, detective. Take up this hammer and nail the defendant's coffin shut with your own two hands. Now then, Detective Gumshoe, let's have your testimony. Um, yes, sir. All right. When the incident took place, the victim was alone at his table, sir. We understand that the guy, Glenn Eld, was listening to the radio at the time. Traces of poison were found in his coffee cup. 
And what we found was potassium cyanide. That stuff really packs a punch. And, uh, looks like Miss Byron might have, or excuse me, looks like Miss Bird might have had, well, some kind of a motive. Hmm. Using the dark, aromatic depths of coffee to conceal the poison. Classy lady. The facts of this case seem to be ironclad. Mr. Wright, I would ask you to begin your cross-examination, but... Yes? Please, no intimidation tricks this time around. Is that understood? I already told you that wasn't me. <laughs> Alright, so Marco Polo. Did a 100-bit cheer and ask, why do I only play WWE 2K games instead of the older ones that were the best on PlayStation 2, like SmackDown vs. Raw? Uh, Marco Polo, you pretty much answered your own question because those are ancient games. They're not new releases. When I play a new WWE game, there's always an element of kind of interest because it's a new release and people are excited to see, geez, this one good, what are the new features versus last year's game, etc. Um, you know, I don't think anyone is necessarily looking for like... Oh, you know, this, the games are good just because they were good and on PS2, so go back and do a throwback wrestling game from, like, 2005. Now, the thing is, I did play those games back in the day. In fact, um, the SmackDown series that didn't turn into SmackDown vs. Raw, I ended up not only owning a bunch of them, but I had, like, a the they called it the multi-tap back then for the PlayStation 2. And I would have my friends come over. I would have, like, five, six people over, and we'd all be doing, like, six-man tags and stuff in these crazy-ass matches. And they were fun as hell. Um, so I do agree with you. I do agree with you. That, in fact, before Batista was even in the games, I made my own custom Batista. And he had a move where he would powerbomb you three times in a row in one move. It was so annoying. All my friends would complain. Because they'd be like, dude, the animation takes way too fucking long for a normal movie. And I would do it like the whole round just to troll them. So it would take like so long to wrestle my created Batista because he would just keep powerbombing over and over. <laughs> That was the cool part about those old games. You control the shit out of, of people. Um, but anyway, I do. In, I did enjoy the throwback WWE games. And, you know, at one point in the future, if ever I wanted to do like, oh, I'm going to go to a trick down memory lane. Let's play a bunch of them. I mean, maybe I would. The thing is, it's very hard to get those, not because you can't buy them, but because they're on PS2. And PS2, a lot of those games, like the wrestling games, the sports games, aren't available digitally. You can only buy them physically, and I don't have a way to capture from a PS2. Um, you know, any PS2 games that I played over the last 10 years that I've been doing this are over PSN, you know, emulated on, like, PS3. And they don't have those games to download, so I don't know how I would do it, honestly. <laughs> Okay. All right, you guys ready? The incident. So, the victim was alone at his table. Let's let's press on that. Can I stop you for just a minute? Huh? What is it? Did I say something that contradicts the evidence? He's so desperate for that to be true, he's practically crying. Your testimony just now doesn't match the testimony given by Mrs. Bird. She claims there was another man at the victim's table. Yeah, that's what she said, and I... What killer wouldn't say that when faced with a homicide conviction? Hey! Sadly, her testimony isn't supported by the owner or the other customer. Isn't that right, Detective Gumshoe? Yeah, it's true. There are two testimonies tie up on that. They both said there was no other guy at the table. Hmm. What should I do? Should I press on this point a little harder or not? Press it harder. Well, maybe the other witnesses just missed him. Perhaps their view of the victim's table was obscured in some way. Huh, that argument is as weak as the coffee at Tree Bien, right? Huh? I have here in my possession a ticket. A ticket? Looks more like a photo to me. Yes, a one-way ticket to Guiltyville. Population, the defending. Huh. This is a photograph taken from near the entrance to the kitchen. This is the scene as witnessed by the chef moments after the poisoning took place, correct? Oh, wait. This is the judge saying this. Therefore, it should sound like this. This is the scene as witnessed by the chef 
Moments after the poisoning took place, correct? <laughs> I think the court will agree. That was such a clear view of the scene of the crime. How, Mr. Try, could anyone have overlooked a second person at the table? Rubble, rubble. It certainly seems to show the victim's table extremely clearly. Crime photo added to the court record. We understand that the guy Glenn, Glenn L was listening to the radio at the time. He was listening to his radio, you say? Yeah, he had a portable radio in his chest pocket. Maggie told us that too, didn't she? Something about how one of them had some sort of earpiece. What should I do? Should I press on this point a little harder or not? Yep. <clears throat> and what was it that the victim was listening to on the radio, Detective Gumshoe? Huh? How would I know? Thanks a lot. We're now one step closer to the middle of nowhere. This isn't going very well, is it? Hmm, Detective, could you perhaps tell us about the poison and how it was used? So, traces of poison were found in his coffee cup. So, traces of the poison were found in the coffee cup and nowhere else? Not sure I get you, pal. Was the poison a liquid or was it a powder? If I had to put it in the layman's terms, I'd say it was a powdery substance. So the poison could have been anything that was on the table. Sugar, salt, pepper? Objection. Ah. Do you put salt and pepper in your coffee, right? Haha. <laughs> the victim took his coffee black with no sugar. Yeah. It seems that the poison could only have been in the coffee. What should I do? Should I press on this point a little harder or not? All right. Are you absolutely certain that the victim even drank any of his coffee? Huh? What do you mean? According to this file, the poison was found in the victim's coffee cup. But what proof is there that the victim ever drank any of it? Oh, hey, uh, you're right. That's what I was thinking. In case you were wondering, that last objection was for the detective there. Huh, for me? Oh, hey, you're right. You may be fooling the court, but I'm not falling for it. If you have the time to waste, you have the time to present that piece of evidence. The... that piece, sir? Yes, that piece. Um, <laughs> oh, what piece was it again? This! <laughs> I love when he does that. Should I be grateful this coffee is only hot enough to give me first degree burns? Uh, dark Side Frogs wants to know why don't I drink out of my Dark Side mug anymore? The one that's from Teespring. To, put, to very, be very honest, um, the only reason is because sometimes I wouldn't finish my drink, and if I didn't, the water would be exposed to the air. And sometimes the water would get stale, and also sometimes I would actually knock it and it would, it would you know, uh, spill. Versus a bottle of water, you can always put the cap back on the top so that the water remains more fresh. And when the cap is on top, if you accidentally knock the bottle over, it doesn't spill everywhere. There were a few cases where I had that mug and I would knock it and it would go everywhere all over my laptop and shit. I'd be like, oh shit. So after that happened a couple times, I kind of thought about, gee, maybe I shouldn't have this mug anymore out here. And even though it's a very nice mug, I very rarely would even have it, like, on camera. I would, like, drink here or whatever. You rarely would see it. So it really wasn't, like, much advertisement anyway. Okay. Okay. Soup Double G Chitty says, I should try doing a frog voice. Oh, now I... <laughs> now I remember. Yes. The the other person who came into the restaurant and poisoned the coffee. Her. <laughs> oh, my God. Everyone. Yay. All right. We're not going to do that. All right. All right. Let's get back to this. All right. Oh, now I remember. Um, uh, this is the, uh, uh, victim's coffee cup. Yes, the victim's cup. Take a good look at the rim. Oh, yes, it's unmistakable. There's clearly a coffee stain on it. Conclusive proof that the victim did drink the poisoned coffee that was in this cup. Ha! Huh. The victim gulped down the bitter death that the waitress brought to it. Like this! Ooh, ah! 
<laughs> that was great. His throw move. <laughs> that was good. That was a good one. He said, like this. Whoop. <laughs> Shout out to Melfian who has subscribed to the channel. That was good. That was actually really well done. That was funny. All right. Gumshoe says, for the record, the only prints on the cup were the victims and the defendants. Coffee cup added to the court record. <laughs> Upon further investigation of this cup, we found a certain chemical substance. All right, and that was the potassium cyanide. Let's press on that. Potassium cyanide? I've heard of that chemical before. Exactly how strong is this poison, Detective Gumshoe? It's, well, that stuff's lethal. Eat too much and you're history. How much is too much? A lethal dose is 0.2 grams. That's about enough to finish anyone up. 0.2 grams? How much is that? You know when you swab your ears for earwax? Yeah, about that much. Only, usually we don't eat that. Probably tastes like shit. Earwax, huh? Sounds like something Gumshoe's got an abundance of. Hmm, such a small quantity of poison could have been concealed anywhere. All right, it looks like Miss Bird might have had some kind of motive. All right, let's talk about that. Some kind of a motive? Yeah, but if you ask me, it's been blown way out of proportion. Objection. You know what my golden rule is, Detective? Chuck out a bad cup of coffee, you can always get another. Huh? I don't get it. Huh. I'm saying we can always get another witness on the stand if we have to chuck you out. Oh, uh, no. So stick to the facts, detective. Now then, what was Miss Bird's motive? Come on, Gumshoe. She was... They say she wanted to steal a lottery ticket. I knew it. That's what he heard yesterday, too. That's what we heard yesterday, too. It disappeared from the scene of the crime. And it wasn't just any lottery ticket. It was a winning ticket for half a million big smack of runic cool ones. Oh, yeah! Rubble, rubble, rubble! Mr. Armstrong knew about the ticket, too, didn't he? But he stole the wrong one. Then, is it possible Maggie stole the winning one? What should I do? Should I press on this point a little harder or not? All right. Wait a minute. The mere fact that the lottery ticket disappeared in no way implicates my client. Huh. I have here in my hand the very ticket in question. Oh, that's a half a million dollar lottery ticket? One of the female police officers found it when she was conducting a search. Of the defendant. Oh, what? Wow, rubble, 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 rubble. <laughs> what the fuck? I just tried to drink out of my bottle and I put a cap on. Oh. These cases take it out of me, man. I'm trying to drink out of a bottle with a cap on. Okay. All right, Swoop Double G, sounds good that you punched a kid at school right in the mouth. I'm sure that's a true story. Anyway, let's continue on. Order, order. Huh, she's quite a lucky bird, our little waitress. Uh, you will submit that ticket as evidence to the court immediately, motherfucker. <laughs> uh, Van Clay 009 just did a hundred bit cheer. I said, Phil, I've been away from gaming for a while. I'm back now and I'm watching your Rage 2 gameplay and enjoying it myself. Love. Thank you, Van Clay, for the cheer. Yeah, if you like high octane, high adrenaline, fast paced first person shooting action, you will love Rage 2. If you're looking for a good story, if you're looking for something different and robust that you've never seen before, yeah, you're not really going to get it, but id Software is great at that fast pace for FPS action, so that's where I think it excels, okay? All right. <sighs> Fuck. All right. Hmm, I better keep an eye on that ticket. The way the judge's voice is quivering. <laughs> Freedom's lottery ticket added to the court record. This ticket was presented to the court in the previous trial, too. But it feels heavier now, somehow. Half a million dollars, you say? It's just a piece of scrap paper. What matters is where it was found, Your Honor. And that's on Maggie's person, unfortunately. 
That's enough. The facts of this case seem overwhelmingly clear to me. The defendant had ample opportunity to commit the crime of which she is charged. Furthermore, it seems beyond reasonable doubt that she didn't kindy commit this crime. I, like an old man who knows the score. There's also the matter of the half million dollar lottery ticket. That alone provides a very credible motive. I mean, for that sum of money, even I might be tempted to bend the rules. Ho, 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 ho. Merry Christmas, Pa Humbug. Give me that money, money, money. I don't mind that old man who is weak to the siren call of money. Not good, Nick. The evidence against Maggie is starting to pile up fast. Yeah, that's because the court has ruled guilty once again already. I'd say it's about time to wrap up this repeat performance. With one final decisive piece of evidence. He's got more evidence against Maggie? This is the apron that the delightful Miss Bird was wearing at the time. Wow, that's not the cleanest apron I've seen. That stain looks like... Can it be blood? Ha! Huh, it seems the star of our play was a little flustered. Ha ha! Delicious. And somehow spilled coffee on herself. The coffee? That's not exactly the first thing that caught my eye. Of course. The coffee stain is the most interesting thing about this apron. No, there's something else that stands out even more. Something else? I presume you mean... Of course, I'm referring to the pocket. The pocket? A search carried out right after the incident uncovered this. Potassium cyanide. The very poison used by the killer was in her apron pocket. A bottle of poison in Maggie's pocket? Yeah, and Maggie's prints were the only ones on it. What? <laughs> How was... How was Phoenix not presented with all the evidence up front so he knew this and he could actually prepare a fair trial with counters and everything rather than, oh, you know, uh, here's all this evidence that gets tossed right in the middle of the freaking trial. This never would happen. Evidence must be admitted for scrutiny by both sides before anything goes to trial so that way if they have questions about it, if they want to challenge the authenticity of it, they have the ability to do so. Not, they don't just, oh, I came to trial with this box of evidence no one's ever seen before. Here we go. That's not how it works, at least in the American court system. Now in Japan... I have no idea if this is different. So, I guess we have to roll with it and just assume this is legit, even though it's probably not. <laughs> Alright. Continue. Order, order, order. The code will, uh, will accept these items into evidence. Alright, so worn by Maggie at the time of the incident, the apron has a small pocket but big stains. So, this is actually, sorry guys, this is actually like... Oh, this is interesting because we got all this evidence of blood. Like, there's blood on the apron, or it looks like blood on the apron, yet there was no blood whatsoever involved in this murder. So, like, this is the first time that we actually have, like, bloody evidence. Oh, there's the red herring or whatever. Or not the red herring. There's the, uh, there's the, the actual proof. It's proof of nothing, because apparently even if it is blood, it has nothing to do with this case. I don't know. Random Rogers cheered. He said, let's be frank. If this were real, everyone would have been guilty of perjury at this point. I guess so, because they all lie, right? They all lie on the stand. Okay. There's something still bothering me, Mr. Godot. Why have you not explained the blood stain to the court? Wow, here we go. Blood stain? What blood stain would that be? Don't play games, prosecutor. The colored stain is smeared upon. Oh, the blood color stain is smeared all over the apron. That's ridiculous. No one told me anything about a blood stain. You don't need to be told. Just look at it. Well, detective, could this stain really be a blood? Uh, no way, sir. That's. It's just ketchup, sir. Ketchup. She must have gotten some on her apron while taking some their, someone their breakfast that day. You could have spoken up a little sooner, Detective Gumshoe. Pull a stunt like that again, and I'll have you drink 17 cups of ketchup with this. Whoa. I thought everyone knew what it was already. <laughs> Aki Artorius, the Divinity Bacheron, says, Was the evidence presented in the previous trial? Because this is a retrial. I don't know. Like, I don't know. That's, that's a good point. Is the evidence we're looking at today all of the evidence that was actually presented and acted upon in the last trial or will there be additional evidence added 
you know, what, what, you, we don't know if we're looking at things for the first time or things that have been developed since then. It's kind of confusing, right? A little bit, at least. Huh. I don't know about Kyoturius. I wish I knew. They didn't really explain any of that. So. Alright. So. The judge says, hmm, I haven't seen anything yet to make me doubt the last ruling I made in this case. The motive, the opportunity, and the supporting evidence. They have all been clearly established. Well, Trey, it seems you really are a phony after all. Ah, you really know how to drive a man in, uh, how to drive a man nuts. We just please continue with your testimony. Describe for the court the crime scene and the findings of your investigation there. Okay. The crime was reported at 2.25 p.m. by a kind of scary old man, sir. I think we know who that is. Poor Maggie had passed out from the shock. It must have been real tough for her. The victim couldn't, didn't have any identification on him. But we figured out who he was pretty quick, and then the investigation went smoothly. When Maggie was searched, we found the lottery ticket and the bottle of poison. And that was it. There was nothing else missing from the crime scene. Hmm. You identified the victim and secured your prime suspect. Very good. Last chance to convince the court you were a real lawyer. Try. Huh? Don't count on any more cross-examinations after this one. So let the fun begin. Oh, boy. Oh, fuck. Okay. So, first thing I want to do, I want to save. Okay, just wanted to double check make sure it was the right one. Okay. Uh, shout out to Vic Von Doom, who has resubbed. For five months in a row, since Philip, I murdered someone, you would be my attorney. And you would be going to jail or getting executed. <laughs> okay. So let's push on this, this scary old man. Scary old man, Detective Gumshoe? There's an old man who's a regular at the restaurant where the incident happened. Ah, we're obviously talking about the same old man. Officers were dispatched right after the report came in, but the old guy still made a fuss. What took you so long? Then he hurled abuse at them and seeds. Hmm, seeds. Ha! Huh, it was nothing. I cut each one with my teeth. <laughs> I guess that you said the mighty Godot could be avoid being attacked by that guy. The old man was the only other customer in the place at the time. He took his time finding a payphone, apparently. So he was late for reporting that crime. Alright, so, this is about Maggie passing out. Let's push on that. How long was the defendant unconscious for? The officers got to the crime scene around 2.40. Maggie was still out cold in the kitchen at that time. It took another 10 minutes or so before she came to. I would have liked to have been on the scene myself. I bet you would have liked to have carried out the search, too. I would have loved to see Maggie asleep like that. All pretty and peaceful. You're a professional detective, Gumshoe. Professional, not a professional bird watcher. Save the romantics for your own time, detective. All we need to know about is the investigation. Oops, I guess I'm pretty red right now, aren't I? <clears throat> Okay, so the victim didn't have any identification on him. Didn't have any? What are you saying? That was? Are you saying it was stolen then? No, I don't think so. The victim didn't have a driver's license or even a credit card on him, pal. All he had was 58 cents in his wallet. 58 cents? Yeah, I can't believe I found something someone with less in their wallet than me, pal. 
The victim sounds like he was a thoroughly miserable young man. For some kind of outlaw, why not give him why not give him a bit of an edge? I think I ought to something here. Alright. Shout out to Marco Polo. We did 100 bit cheers and I loved you and your content for 11 years. That's crazy. It's been that long. Uh, all of us will love to see you play casting games again like you did back in 2010 to 2013. Alright. So, hold it. Wait a sec. Huh? Oh, did I say something dumb again? Let me paraphrase what you just testified to this court. The victim didn't have any form of ID on him. That's basically, basically what you said, right? Basically. In that case, how were you able to identify the victim so quickly? Oh, that. He's still let down. He's got the whole sagging shoulders and puppy eyes thing going. There's a prescription bag on the victim's table along with the lottery ticket. It seems Mr. Glenn Elk visited the doctor before he went to Trey Bien. He got the victim's name from the medical records of the doc who prescribed the meds. Hmm, that's a reliable enough source for the sword, for the court. What should I do? Shall this owner ask to hear more? We want more. So what sort of medicine was in the bag? Well, actually, the bag we found was empty. Huh? Yeah, completely empty. It was completely empty? Victim's prescription bag added to the court record. Interesting. That is very interesting. Huh. Hmm. Goes down smooth. You're entering an empty paper bag as evidence? You're desperate, are you, Trey? <laughs> now, what happened with the investigation after that, Detective? Oh, man. Excuse me. When Maggie was searched, we found the lottery ticket and the bottle of poison. The defendant had been passed out for a while, correct? In that case, isn't it possible someone planted the evidence in Maggie's pocket? Hey, uh, yeah, you nailed it, pal! Hmm. It happens to me all the time. We had an apartment party the other day, and when I got home, I was wearing the boss's shoes! Objection. Keep up this crazy testimony, detective, and those shoes will end up down your throat! Sorry. So, try it. Someone plant, planted the evidence in Maggie's pocket. That's a pretty bold statement. Care to back it up with some evidence? Hmm. Well, I'd love to if I had any. It appears you have no evidence to support your theory, Mr. Wright. Continue on with your testimony, witness. That was it. There was nothing else missing from the crime scene. So the half million dollar lottery ticket and the bottle of poison were accounted for. Yeah. Interesting. It's true that those two items are accounted for, but wasn't there another lottery ticket that was stolen that day? Oh, oh uh, yeah. The one the restaurant owner took. He won a whole dollar with it. What a lucky guy, huh? And they're just going to let him get away with it? It was just one dollar, detective. I guess no one cares when it's that little. Except for Gumshoe. Ha <laughs> ha! If I don't find a hole in this testimony, the judge is going to hand down the verdict. No! Okay. Otis33 did a 200 bit cheer. And he said, Have a good stream. Thank you very much, Otis, for the cheer of the night. Top cheer of the night. Let's get you up on the leaderboard. Very nice for Otis to come by and. Contribute, thank you very much. Also, Marco Polo just cheered. He says, Your content is awesome. Thank you very much. Dorky, cheer 100 bits. This wasn't a troll cheer. I actually heard it from someone. Sorry, it was inappropriate. Oh, this question was something stupid about cat if I didn't read it because it was really dumb. <laughs> okay, so what do we do? Gumshoe isn't giving us anything to work with. We can't find any contradictions if he doesn't give us something. Yeah, that's true. But Maggie and Gumshoe are like dumb and dumber. Our only hope is that they were so dumb they missed something obvious. Come on, Gumshoe, be the dumbest you've ever been! <laughs> hmm. Hmm. 
How long was the defendant unconscious for? The officers got to the crime scene around 2.40. Maggie was still out cold in the kitchen at that time. It took another 10 minutes or so before she came to. I would have liked to have been on my scene myself. I bet you would have liked to have carried out the search too. I would have I loved to see Maggie asleep like that, all pretty and peaceful. You're a professional detective, Gumshoe. Professional bird, not a professional bird watcher. <laughs> Alright. So we already know that. Didn't have any Okay, we didn't even have any identification on him. Oh, yeah. He didn't have any? Are you saying that was stolen then? No, I don't think so. Yeah, you didn't have any and nothing on him. Just 58 cents. Right. Why would we only have 58 cents that change for something? Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. So, the dinner cost 20 bucks, but he had 58 cents left. Now, nah, I'm just trying to think maybe there was a price. You can figure out what he ate, what he bought, or what he ate. And yeah, but that's not going to factor in at all, I don't think. Yeah, hmm. Tia Vool to me a dollar and says, Did you hear the new Xbox will have Connect 3.0? Dude, come on. Stop that. It's not even funny to joke about. There's no fucking way it's going to have that. There's no way that we connect again. They can't be that stupid. There's no way. There's no possible way Microsoft can be that fucking stupid. Come on. Alright, anyway. Rio, who was pretty quick, he was using it smoothly. Why do you search for the lottery ticket and a bottle of poison? Oh, wait! There was one where I could ask two questions, wasn't there? There was one where I could have asked two questions. Fuck, which one was it? Victim of that. It was the bag. Okay. <sighs> I'm trying to figure this out. This is very tricky. Tricky. Okay. Bad money that ought to be cheered, If you're on Tinder and you swipe right and a chick that you're gonna meet up with in real life looks like this, the frog emo, what do you do? Uh, I don't know, because I don't even know what Tinder, I mean, what is Tinder? I know it's a dating app, I don't know anything about it. It's not like you're forced into going to see the person who looks like a frog. Maybe you like frogs. Different strokes for different folks. Maybe the, maybe the person likes, is attracted to frogs. Kermit the Frog, a lot of people are attracted to Kermit the Frog. So maybe, you know, maybe it's not an issue. I don't know. Anyway, Uzi cheered 51 bits. Thank you, Uzi, for the 51-bit cheer. So, we gotta find the one that had the two options. Objection. Yeah, come on, we gotta get back to where we were. Where was the one that had the two options? God damn it. Stolen, 58 cents. Yeah, how do we know it works with the bag? Oh, okay. So I pressed again, and now he's saying something different. Okay, so here we go. Let me paraphrase what you just testified to this court. The victim didn't have any form of ID on him. That's basically what you said, yes? Yeah, basically. In that case, how were you able to identify the victim so quickly? Oh, that. So he's let down the whole saying shoulders of puppy eyes thing. So the pres prescription bag, right. There you go. But the victim's name for the medical records, okay. So there you go. Now, how do I... But there was a question before. Wasn't there a question before?
I thought there was two questions you could ask and I asked one, but I need to ask the other, but I can't find it now. Oh, I don't have the option anymore because I chose the right one? Oh. So then what do I do? <laughs> I got the bag as evidence. Do I present the, that here now? Yeah, it didn't work. Yeah, I'm, I'm uh, See, I'm too many dollars. Says, Do you want to make a bet for $50 on the Connect 3.0? No, I'm not saying that... All right, let me put it this way. Maybe Microsoft will have a Connect 3.0, but there's no freaking way they're going to do it like they did with the Xbox, 3, uh, Xbox One, where it's required to buy it with the system. Maybe they'll sell it as a separate peripheral. Maybe they'll have a, a special edition that's more expensive and has the Connect 3.0 with it. There's no way in holy hell that they're stupid enough to think that people are going to want to have that as a mandatory thing. People will not buy that fucking console this time. Okay. All right. 